your life, you're gonna own nothing. You own three things, okay? You own your fitness, you own your thoughts and emotions. Okay, right, so let's go, let's go into let's go into this. So you've been lifting weights for how long now? How when did your career start in um lifting? Like how old were you? I, I was uh, in 2007. Okay. Well, end of 2006, I started weightlifting, and then my first meet was in 2007. Mm -hmm. And yeah, man, shit, I think I was like uh, 21 years old, 22. Okay, and, okay. You know, so um, man, long time ago, and just got, you know, I did bodybuilding before I got into weightlifting. Yes. I found weightlifting, and then just got bit by the bug. Uh -huh. you know, I've been doing it ever since. You know, so. All right, all right. Yeah. So what's your, give, give, give me give me a couple minute background story to what you were doing before you were weightlifting. Drugs. Okay. What type man. of drugs? Oh man. Everything, eh? Meth. No, just meth. Yeah. Meth. I mean, you know, meth is my go-to. Um, I mean, obviously cocaine. But when but the thing is, is that when you're on meth, when you're when you when your drug of choice is meth, uh -huh. cocaine is shit. Is it? I've never smoked meth before, bro. So. No. Dude, you can't, there's no fucking comparison. I mean, someone brings in some coke and lands it up on the table, you laugh at it. Like, what is this fucking <laughs> What do you want me to do? I mean, of course you're going to snort it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Out yeah, of, like, spite know, for it, you snort it. Like, I'm going to snort this shit even though it's shit. Yeah, you're not going to deny it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you like, get that coke, get that great <laughs> cocaine away from yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they hit it hard, man. But, yeah, I mean, I mean meth is the... Um, there's a reason why it's so addicting. Yeah. It's, it's that good. Uh -huh. I mean, meth is an unbelievable... Makes you feel good, eh? Oh. And, and people like deny... It's like when people... It's like cigarettes. Uh -huh. Like, oh, ooh, gross. Glad you stopped, huh? Well, I mean, I'm glad I stopped, but I really miss it. Dude, I, I, dude when I see dude smoking cigarettes, dude, I'm like, dude, like, yeah. I wish that was me right now. Like, <laughs> like, I miss it. I mean, there's a, there's a peaceful... Bro, all, sometimes all I want to do is go out the back of my house and, like, drink something. I don't know, drink something <laughs> cold or something and smoke a cigarette, dude. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not trying to make light out of my drug use. No, 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 no. I, I, I've just talked about it so much. I've published a book and... But, but you know, I'm, it, it is. It's good. And, and that's what's so bad about it. That, how good it is. I mean, yeah. I mean, anybody that says that's... Oh, that sucks. It's like, that's ridiculous. But... Yeah, I was just a big partier, man. I mean, you know, from, from low to high, just, you know, just all over the place. Fights, you know, assault charges, DUIs, Fuck, you know, you know um, drunk tanks. You so know, weightlifting uh, really changed. It, cha it, it was the catalyst to change your life, really. Yeah, man, I was a punk man. And, you know, my dad was, like, really rich. And he was just one of these, like, suit and tie coke heads. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And we'd be at, a, like, a mansion party. Yeah. And we'd be doing just blow and meth oh. straight in a mansion. I, think I was 15, 16, 14. That's, a, doing that's, that's fucked up. That's pretty cool. You know, it's like, you'd be surprised how common it is for like dudes to smoke meth or do all that sort of shit with their parents, bro. Crazy. I mean, it started out with drinking. Yeah. And, you know, and then the next week and later, my dad had this other side where he knew these like, I mean, thugs, you know I mean? What these, the fuck? These, 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 these bangers, man, these low level fucking druggy guys that were cool. Yeah. I mean, I love them. Yeah. 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 But they, you know, they, we were in like the fucking hood, literally the projects. And uh -huh. We'd be there for three, four nights straight, you know? And so like every weekend it switched and like my dad was this weird guy that had like respect with everybody. It doesn't matter his social level. Okay. It's that criminal respect, bro. Some they got good respect, bro. It was weird, man. I learned a lot from my dad. I mean, it's all in my book right now. And like, yeah. he, he would get like his Lexus. They had a nice Lexus at the yeah. time, and and he would let these like thug dudes, yeah, drive his car all the time. And Fuck day. Because it was a, sh a sign of him being like, I trust you. You know, you can drive my I shit. I know you're gonna bring it back. That yeah, loyalty. They, all, they do. They didn't just bring it back. They had it. They brought it back washed. Bro, with, with thug, bro, thugs have loyalty, dude. I'm telling you, dude. Any sort of criminal behavior, like good, like yeah. solid criminals or dudes who get engaged in like solid illegal activity, yeah. dude, they're so respectful, dude. Sometimes it's like when I see them, I'm like, this feels like I'm and now I'm watching The Sopranos or something, like just so like, you know what I mean? It, yeah, I mean it was mafia shit in a weird way. I mean, 
like we'd be at the mansion parties and like my dad wouldn't let the rich guys drive his car he's like this guy won't fucking this guy will bring it back with you know a mess Mm -hmm. but you know it was interesting man i mean so i finally to make a long story short Mm -hmm. you know i um and that's the thing though it's weird because i had a good childhood you know, it was, right, but having like a good a, childhood doesn't mean child. don't, having a good childhood is you know some people are like oh he had a good childhood though and like he had like, that doesn't mean fucking shit. Do you know what I mean? It's all up to the person or like it's like having a good childhood doesn't just mean like you can raise your child to be the most like straight A fucking vegan sure. vegan yeah. eating human clean no Nike wearing fuck. But as soon as he hits the streets, bro, it's completely game over, bro. You know, and I, I think I, I somehow I pulled out of it with, through weightlifting because I saw Pumping Iron for the first time. Yeah. With Arnold. And that's, that's my love for bodybuilding is Pumping Iron to save me. But I just remember being like, you know, a crack house. And, you know, you're up for three, four days and you start, you, lo- you, lo- you know, you lose your mind. And people definitely lose their mind over the time period. And people would lose it. And they'd be like, well, I'm freaking out. And I would be like the one that would always be like, I'm not saying I was a leader or anything, but yeah. I'd always be like, okay, guys, let's stop for a second <laughs> and realize the fact that we've been high on meth for like four days. Like four days. Yeah. Like, let's just go ahead and just take that into consideration. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, look at all these people, and they're like, "Okay, dudes like, are feeling like, heaps like strung like, out, like having weird thoughts." Like, You're like, "Dude, we've been high for like the last four days." Yeah, like time out. Yeah. You know? And like, if you don't do that, I always had like a good head on my shoulders, and because you know, if you don't do that, shit, bad shit will happen. You get lost, eh? Yeah. Uh, you get lost, man. I reckon I if you, I, I have a feeling you'd start believing your own shit too much if you just don't think about that. You gotta understand the situation. Yeah. And when I lost my mind once, yeah, and um, I was, it was, it was the biggest bender I've ever done. It was five days. Okay. I was with my, was with my dad, and um, on the fifth day, I started to lose my mind, and it's almost more of the sleep. Oh yeah. Anything. It's a mixture, and it was probably one to this day the scariest moment of my whole life like knowing that you're starting to lose it yeah but was, so you start and when you say losing control of losing losing it are you talking in a sense like you're losing control of the like you're losing actual control over the way you think and you start thinking of weird shit kind of in a way or like you start you start going down this path of like uncontrolled thoughts and emotions and that kind of in that kind of sense god i mean a little bit of both man it's really hard to explain yeah yeah, yeah. Little, like you nailed it it's just your reality, you start to think weird things. Yeah, yeah. And you and you and you realize that they don't make fucking sense. Yeah. But you start to believe them anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the best way I can put it. Yeah, that's what I. That's exactly what I'd say. Losing control. Yeah. It's like not having control. It's uncontrolled thinking, dude. Legitimately uncontrolled it's, thinking. Yes. So like you pour it like due to like let's say I'll use like. For me, I had a period where, like when I couldn't sleep for like almost like two years. Well, obviously I slept, otherwise I would have died or whatever. But for some reason, I just couldn't sleep. Like I'd go to bed every night so tired and like every time I'd sit in fucking bed, I'd sit there and then 10 minutes, it started off like five minutes into bed, I just start getting hot and I'd start thinking of weird shit like Harry Potter and I was like, oh dude, I'm just too stimulated, I'm too stimulated. But then it just, it's like a never ending spiral, right? And eventually I would call it, you know, I started losing control a bit where I just had uncontrolled thoughts all the fucking time. Like I would be cooking pancakes like, and my mum would be talking to, talking to me while I'm cooking pancakes. And I would thinking about, I'd be thinking about killing myself. Like, and it would just freak me the fuck out. It was the most, like you said, you know how you said it was the most scary day of your life. Yeah. That was the most scary. Like I always say now, dude, to people like, I'm not scared of no fucking thing on the planet because the biggest thing for me that is scary is not, is being scared of yourself. Like if, if you're scared of yourself, like, you know, everything else around me is like created through me. Like the worlds I see and shit is just my, it's seen through my eyes and interpreted through my brain. So it's like, that can be scary. But what's more scary is like the inside being fucking scared of that, dude. It's like that controls everything, your whole reality, your whole day life. So if I can't cook pancakes without thinking about killing myself, like, isn't that fucking scary, bro? Yeah. I mean, how'd you get out of that? How'd you stop thinking about it? You know, I I had to, first off, I had to accept it. Like, I just had to accept that I had lost control. Like, instead of like, because the biggest thing that was plaguing me was the fact that I was so scared. So I'd always be, every time I'd have that thought, I would just freak out on it. Like, I would just freak out on it. I'd be like, dude, I'm so scared right now. 
and I would just sit there and I would keep thinking it. And it would just, and like, because you put, you get so scared and you keep putting thought and emotion into it. You'd be sitting there cooking the pancakes. Oh my God, I'm going to kill myself. And eventually you just like, you get plagued on the fact that you thought you were going to kill yourself. And then eventually you think about it so much, that thought that eventually you go, well, fuck, like maybe, like maybe I do want to kill myself. Like maybe that's why I'm thinking that way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But the biggest thing for me was to accept it. So what I do was I would accept it and I'd say like, look, you did think about killing yourself. That's really what happened. Like that's, that's what fucking happened, bro. Don't beat around the bush. You wanted, yeah. you thought about the thought crossed your mind. And it was a legitimate thought. But then I started to realize a conversation with yourself. Yeah, if that's what that's what's scary, bro. Then I started talking to myself. I couldn't do anything and just be. Do you know how when you lift weights, it's almost like everyone knows that feeling when like you're doing something and you're so into it that like when you look at the clock, you're like, "Fuck, man, it's been four hours." I didn't realize it's been four hours. Mm-hmm. And like you've been clear of thought. The only way that happens is when you don't think. You're just, you're like being, you're just living, right? I couldn't be like that, dude. I couldn't even sit in a fucking movie. Like I'd be sitting in the movie thinking about death and all this weird stuff. And I'd be thinking like, dude, like, like, can't I just watch a fucking movie and not think about killing myself? You know what I mean? But I accepted it. And then I started saying like, then I started realizing, bro, that like a thought is just a thought with no action. It's just a thought. is just a thought. And until you put it into action, it's just a thought. Do you know what I mean? And then like you said about the meth, I had to tell myself, I said, look, bro, you know, you've been training and not sleeping now for almost a fucking year and a half, bro. Like your body doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Like it's going to be, it's going to be pushing you, bro. It's going to be sending you all these fucked up responses and you're going to be having weird emotions just because of the situation that you put yourself into. So then I started, yeah, I started realizing, I said, okay, let's step back. Like if I do have a thought like that, it's just a thought. I don't have to act on the thought. I have control of what my actions are. Do you know what I mean? So I think about killing myself. I just used to laugh, bro. It was it was sick in the fucking head, dude. I used to sit down and I used to laugh at it. And I say, that's kind of funny. Like, and I just start giggling and shit. And now when I look back on it, it's kind of funny because I'd be like, how funny retarded is that? Like my mom's speaking to me in the kitchen, like while I'm flipping pancakes, like laughing at the fact that I wanted to kill myself. Like, it's so bizarre. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's scary shit, bro. Yeah. And then I, it was just, oh, it just little things I just started implementing, dude to like make to make the change that made the biggest change because I used to be the, the fear is what will paralyze you and what paralyzed me the most and what made me feel that it was like and ne- that that I would never get out of it but I started saying I started saying like let's who cares about the fear dude like you've hit rock bottom now we're at rock bottom now like there's no like when you when you contemplate your own life like that you're at rock bottom so I said I'm I'm living on too big of a scale I'm thinking about dude you know I felt like this last week and it's it's been a week and I still feel like that and I'm like, dude, what happens if in two years I still feel like this? Like, it's going to, I don't want to live my life like that. And it fucking freaked me the fuck out. But I said, dude, stop thinking about two years. Think about, think about now. So I started living on a thought to thought base. I started living on like a second to second basis. I said, like, I'm just going to do my best every moment of the day to live my life the way I want to live it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Straight up. I'm not, I don't give a fuck about tomorrow. I don't give a fuck about two years from now. I don't give a fuck about anything. All I can do is control the moment and just be, just be in the fucking moment. And then when I started thinking like that, I dropped the fear of like, what's going to happen tomorrow? What, happen, what happens in two years when I, you know, I'm not at uni no more and I have no friends and I'm by myself and like, I, I fucking, I, you know, I feel like killing myself. Like it sucks. But I'm just, when I start living in the moment, you don't fear that anymore. And then you get, you gain re-control of it. You have to lose, I always say this, you have to lose control to gain control. The most, the people I know who have the most control over those, li- over their lives have lost control at one point. Hands down, bro. They've like, they, they, a lot of people, that's why I've got mates who've been you like, kind of like you, who used to smoke meth and do all this shit. And they're some of the most level headed, rational control people I've ever met. And I'm just like, dude, like you get it, bro. Like you get it, dude. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that's a good, that's a good story, man. I'm so glad you got out of that, man. That's, yeah. Um, you know, hope maybe there's someone listening that could, you know, it's going to take your advice and help them. So that's good. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I do with my channel, bro. And that's what I kind of, why I've always kind of been fascinated with you is, because people see, like, might see your stuff on, like, a materialistic basic, like, oh, just John lifts big weights or, like, John yells. But to me, it's more it's more of, like, an expression. To me, I consider myself second generation to what you kind of have done and what you're doing. Like, I see you – I this is what I say, bro, and I think you can understand it. You kind of understand – I think oh, you might understand this. It's like, at the start of every video, I say, all you own in life is your thoughts, emotions, and fitness, Right? And people are like, no, dude, I own my car, I own, my, I own this. Like, uh, you know, John's saying, I own the mic, I own, I own this. I'm like, no, dude. Like, when, when you die, like, you know, we're all going to die, right? I'm not going to bury you in the grave with your house and your car. Like, I'm just going to bury you in the grave with your body. I remember once, bro, I was in San Francisco. I was in San Francisco like four months ago, bro. And um, 
I was I came down to on stairs to my mates, um, and his dad's like a Buddhist, and he was like meditating, and his dad was like a real like quiet dude, and, and all of a sudden he just started talking to me about his beliefs and stuff, and he was we were he, we were talking about how we sex and stuff into like mental stuff in life, and then we step in physical stuff in life, and physical and like this is like more Buddhist teachings that like f- physical stuff will always get stripped from you. Like eventually it will get stripped. Like in a sense, your life will be stripped of you. And that's pretty physical if you think about it, eh? Yeah. Like if you think about it, like the day you were born, dude, like we're ticking time bombs, bro. Like I'm not trying yeah. to sound, I'm not trying to sound all cheesy and like, 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 you know, oh, will we, are we like, let's eat fruit, sit on a fucking beach and med- meditate and say namaste. But I'm saying like, we're ticking time bombs. Like we will die, right? We will die in a sense. Like this physical form that we live in is going to be end, right? So I feel like people put too much faith into physical stuff their whole life. Our, i.e. working jobs, they don't want to work to afford shit. They don't, they don't really fucking need, bro. Just because we've been taught that that's what you need to fucking do. John, you need, to, you need to go to school and this is what you need to do to make heaps of fucking money and you need to have a blonde wife with fake boobs and you need to drive a real nice car and that's what's going to make you fucking happy and just work for the system your whole life. Do you know what I mean? But it's like, dude, that that's all going to end one day anyway. It's just like... The mental stuff to me is what lasts. And what I kind of find with your stuff is like, if you can make some make someone feel a certain way and empower someone to like take charge on what really matters in life, I, I, like that's what's, that's what's like kind of like your slogan, like love your life or change it or do what you want kind of things like that. Do you know what I mean? If you can empower someone to feel that way, that's what's cool. So that's, that's why I say when I'm second generation of you is like, I used to watch dudes like you and stuff and I used to say like, fuck dude, I loved, I've watched heaps of dudes lift weights. But something about when I watch you is like I get this I get this feeling, bro. I get a feeling of an empowerment of just like, you know what? Like, like I'm just gonna do what I want in my life. I'm just gonna do what I want and I'm like, I'm not gonna be a slave to the system and I'm just gonna really like do what I want. I'm gonna pursue what I wanna pursue and put thought, emotions, and effort into what I think is valid. Yeah. And so I took that from you. I took that feeling from you guys or whatever. Now I'm like, I make videos or I talk about it on my channel, it's like I try and make people feel that way. And eventually, that's what I'm saying. Physical stuff doesn't last, for, last forever, but thoughts and emotions do. You affected me, right? And then yeah. that's going to affect someone else. And eventually, bro, until the whole human fucking race is over, your vision or the way you thought and the way you affected someone else will live until humanity fucking dies. Because I feel it off you and I fucking feel it. And I affect someone else. And they affect someone else. And it's a never-ending fucking line of a lifestyle, bro. Literally. Of, of like just changing fucking lives. Just through the way you talk, the way you act, the way you live. All that shit. Do you know what I mean? Not what you possess. Don't you reckon? It's a ripple effect. Till the end of time, bro. Think about it. Because you affect your mate. Pay it forward, man. That's, that's crazy. That's, I never even thought about it that way. Yeah, bro, because you affect me and I affect my kid. It's the way, it affects the way I teach my kid and it affects the way he teaches his kid and his friend and his school teacher. And it goes down the line, bro, to where, dude, it's like, it just keeps going, bro. It, it literally, people talk about like, you know, when I say like, you're not, your car's not going to last forever, your clothes aren't going to last forever, your body, the way you lift won't even last forever. But the way you treat people, the way you think, the way, you know, you affect other people's lives and improve them, that really is what lasts forever. Do you know what I mean? And the cool thing about weightlifting is, bro, like weightlifting is just a, a tool to teach you about life. Weightlifting is like, I always said like school never taught me anything, bro. School taught me to listen to authority and not think for myself. Do you know what I mean? Weightlifting taught me like courage, discipline, think for myself, like to go against what everyone ever, everyone else told me, to push it when I, I thought I couldn't to push it no more. Do you know what I mean? Weightlifting is the ultimate teacher, bro. Yeah. I said, empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend.